Let's see a show of hands. If you've ever built a project, put it to work, and found out that maybe there's a couple things you could have done different to make it work a little bit better or be a little bit more functional. Well, that is exactly the case with my guitar routing binding jig. Let's see if we can make this a little bit better. What's going on everyone? Welcome to this episode of Home Built Workshop. I hope your day is going fantastic. Yes, the guitar binding jig. If you've seen the build video or the video where I put it to work building the acoustic guitar, this thing works great. Functionality, there's no issues whatsoever. I could leave this as is, but after using it and messing around with it, I've discovered a few things that I think we can improve upon. I'm gonna bring you in a little bit closer and show you a few of those issues. The first thing that I discovered really is more of an annoyance than it is a problem. Since I have this retraction spring to take some of the weight off of this plate, if I lay this down or try to store this somewhere, well, the spring causes this thing to always want to retract. I think some sort of a latch or a locking mechanism to hold this in place at some random position would be kind of helpful. Not necessary, but it would be nice. Another issue that results from this retraction spring is this top cap. It is just press fit into place inside this aluminum extrusion. While it's rare that it would happen, if I lift this a little too far, it can cause this top cap to come off. So some sort of a retention system on this top cap to keep it from popping off of there would be kind of nice too. Another thing that I want to address is the size of this base plate. While it works just fine as is, it is a little bit wider than it needs to be. The router base is only so wide, so there's really no reason for this to have such a large overhang. Now I do want a little bit of an overhang just for, I don't know, aesthetics? But I think I can trim this down a little bit, make it a little bit narrower, which will also reduce a little bit of the weight. Not a lot but a tiny bit, and I think really it'll just save a little bit of material. I also want to bring the router a little bit closer to this front edge. Now I can't go too far because of the radius that's on the front edge, but I think we can move it just a little bit farther forward. That'll give us a tiny bit more depth and a little bit more clearance when we're running the guitar body underneath. But the biggest reason that I decided to go ahead and make some changes to this binding jig really has to do with these bearings and the slot size in this aluminum extrusion. When I built this jig, I used a 45 millimeter extrusion, really because I just thought that a little larger size is going to maybe result in a little more rigidity. The problem is this slot here is 10 millimeters wide. And this bearing is almost exactly the same width. It's just a tiny bit wider. So the engagement between the bearing and the sides of these slots is, it's really small. If there's any wear over time on these slots, this bearing has the potential to drop inside of the slot and potentially destroying whatever piece we're routing the binding channels on. So what I wanna do is swap out this extrusion for one that's a little bit smaller, that way the slots will be smaller and I'll get better engagement between the bearings and the slot. And I won't risk the chance of any wear destroying the jig or potentially ruining the piece that we're running. So did you get all that? There's basically four things that I wanna to try to improve on. The bearing engagement between the slots. I wanna reduce the size of this plate. I need to add some sort of retention on this top cap and add some sort of a mechanism to lock this in place for better storage and times when I'm not using it. While it would be possible to just trim this plate down, maybe re-drill a few mounting holes to change some locations, it's gonna start looking like Swiss cheese if we do that. I've got a piece of this aluminum angle left over. I think it'll be easier and much cleaner to just cut a new piece and remake the base plate and basically rebuild this thing from the ground up. Sound like a plan? Let's get started. Just like I did when I built the first version, I'm going to use the table saw to cut down this aluminum angle. If you're curious as to the size, this is a 3 inch by 5 inch aluminum angle, and I'm cutting it to 3 and 3 quarters of an inch wide. Once I have it cut, I'll clean up the rough edges with a file. Now, if we compare the size of the new plate 
to the old one, you can see that it's, I don't know, about a half inch narrower. It's now just wider than the base plate on the router. There's really no reason to have it any wider than that. It's just extra material, extra weight, and really it's not gonna make any difference in the strength. Now I can go ahead and mark and drill all the holes to mount the bearings as well as the router and the little donut. Now last time I did a whole lot of measuring, a bunch of math, figuring, misdrilled a few holes more than once. This time around it's gonna be a lot easier. I've 3D printed some drilling guides with all of the holes that I'm gonna need to drill there's a couple of little registration ledges here, so all we need to do, line that up just like that. We'll mark all these holes and we can drill them to the appropriate size. I've made these little plates for both the router mount as well as for the bearings. This is gonna make it really quick. And just like that, all of the holes for mounting the bearings are marked out. To make this as accurate as possible, I'm using a center drill to set the hole location before drilling it with a number seven drill bit. Now I'll tap these four outer holes for quarter 20, and this little guy in the middle is gonna get an 832 tap. Don't forget to use plenty of tapping fluid, especially when you're tapping aluminum. My tapping fluid of choice is Tap Magic. Not sponsored or anything, but this stuff is awesome. Now we'll just do basically the exact same thing using my other drill guide to drill all of the holes to mount the router as well as the little donut. Mmm, makes me hungry for a chocolate covered donut. The last hole I'm going to drill is going to be right in the center with a one inch hole saw. This is where the router bit will poke down through the jig. And now a little more 832 tapping. These are for the four holes that will attach the donut. I've got all the holes drilled that need to be drilled, all the holes tapped that need to be tapped. Let's start swapping some parts off of this old one, see if my holes line up. I'm going to set this guy aside for now. We're going to come back to that later. If you remember when I built this originally, this has a little aluminum spacer, a little eccentric adjusting bushing. That way I can adjust the tension. And these are some V-groove bearings that ride in the slots. These are M4 metric screws. The only reason it's metric is because that's the thread size on the bottom of this router. The holes on this bracket are not threaded for these screws. They're just through holes and they're a little bit oversized so that I have a little bit of wiggle room when reinstalling the router. looks good. I already like this narrower plate much better. Let's swap out the donut. And then maybe I'll have to go get a donut. This is the part that I'm excited to see if it lines up right away. It should, in theory, as long as I didn't drill something out of whack. So everything fits good here. Let's see if it fits on the extrusion. This time around, I'm using a 40 millimeter extrusion. I believe the size on these T slots here are eight millimeter versus the 10 millimeter that were on the 45 millimeter extrusion. We should get a much better engagement in the bearings in these slots, and it should be a lot better. Since we have these eccentric bushings, if there's any slop, we can adjust that so that it's nice and snug with absolutely zero play. I like it. 
much better engagement with the bearings in those T slots. Nice. Now I'll swap this new one over to the base. Not sure the dimension wise if I need to make any adjustments, but we'll see how that turns out. I'm swapping out the angle bracket that supports this extrusion as well. This one is specifically sized for the 40 millimeter extrusion. Like I did on the original version, I'm securing it to the plywood base with some screws. You could also use threaded inserts if you wanted as well. I think that'd be a nice addition. Here I'm just giving it a final tweak just to make sure it's nice and square. Now I can use the old extrusion to mark the length I need to cut the new one. I found that a length of about 9 inches works well when it's sitting on a 3 quarter inch thick base. With our bracket installed on the base, I'm going to clamp this thing to the workbench just temporarily. Let's drop the router on. So far it works nice and smooth. Now we can focus on the new top cap with the spring retention. Fresh off the 3D printer, here's all the pieces that are going to make up the new top cap assembly. There's several parts here and really quite a few hours of prototyping to get all these things to fit together. We have a top cap which will fit down in the aluminum extrusion. These little tabs will be used with some screws combined with these little blocks to clamp everything in place inside the aluminum extrusion. This will hold the cap to the extrusion so that it can't pop off. Then we have the actual cover which will cover everything up. This is going to get held in place with some screws into the bottom. These little guys are what's going to hold the spring in place. It's got a 3 8 hole in here which I'll use a cut off piece of a regular 3 8 bolt to hold the retention spring which will pass down through this little hole and go down inside the track on the extrusion. Let's put it together and I'll show you how it's going to work. Before I can assemble this, I'm going to use a very small 632 tap to make some threads right in this 3D print. The holes are already there, I'm just cutting threads right into the plastic. The little clamping blocks as well as the four holes that secure the top cap all get threaded. I'm reusing the pin from the first binding jig. This is just a 3 8 bolt that I've cut the threaded portion off as well as the head. So really it's just a pin. Then I'll install a brass bushing which has a 3 8 inch inside diameter. This isn't necessary but I figure anything I can do to reduce friction. After dropping the spring in place, I'll then install the other support bracket and tap it on. Now this little sub-assembly gets pressed into the top cap and tapped into place as well. You may notice that I've put a small bolt through the hole in the end of the spring. This is really just so I can grab hold of it without it springing out of my hand. Now we'll pass the spring down through the hole that's in the top cap and reinstall the little bolt to keep it from winding back in on itself. This whole contraption gets secured together using some 632 tapered screws. They fit into some countersunk holes that are built into the base plate so that it sits flush with the aluminum extrusion. To hold everything in place, I'll use some more tapered 632 screws to attach the clamping blocks to the side. Now I think this part might be a little bit tricky, but we can make it happen. It's really kind of tricky to show exactly what I'm doing here, but this spring is going to run down inside the T-slot on the aluminum extrusion. There's a long bolt that's going to run from the angle base plate into the T-slot and attach to the spring. While I don't have enough hands to comfortably hold everything where I need to, I need to attach the spring to the back of the extrusion and get everything adjusted so that the spring runs down through the slot. 
On the previous version of the jig, I had the spring running on the outside, and while that worked just fine, I think running it down on the inside is just a lot cleaner look. <laughs> I like it. Well, I think we are moving right along on this, and we've already taken care of three out of the four issues that I wanted to solve. Now all we have left is some sort of a locking mechanism to hold this thing in place when it's not in use. And that's where this little guy comes into play. This is a little spring-loaded plunger. You can see the plunger springs back and forth. It's got a quarter 20 thread, and if we mount this in a good spot, I think we can use this guy to hold the jig in the up or down position. Or maybe both. I made a little bracket that this will thread into. We'll put a jam nut on here and attach this to the side of our jig. And when we combine the plunger with the little bracket and screw it to this aluminum angle, drill a couple of holes in the side, then you can lock the jig in place at wherever you feel like it needs to be locked. If I want to store it, I can lock it in the lower place. Maybe I'm adjusting the bit depth. I can lock it in the upper position where I can get to good access underneath where I can access the bit. When I want to run the jig, there's a detent that allows this little plunger to stay in a retracted position and I have free range of motion when I need to lock it. Boom. And with that, we're going to call the Mark II version of my binding tower a wrap. I can't wait to put this thing to work. Stay tuned for that. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button as I do plan on starting another acoustic guitar very soon. And this will, for sure, get put to work. Now I know that there are several of you that were interested in some of the STL files and some of the parts and pieces and where did I get this, that, or the other thing. Well, I want to let you know that I have assembled a package and put it on my website that includes all of the information that I used to build this jig. It's going to have the drawings with all the hole locations, so you can use that for reference. It's going to have the STL files for the little 3D printed drill guides in case you want to go that route. I've got the STL files for the donut, as well as the STL files that make up the spring retainer. I also have a complete parts list and where I sourced the parts so that if you want to build exactly the same thing, you can just order up the parts and go from there. Or if you want to source your own parts, you can follow the links in this document. It's going to take you to the website where I ordered them from, and you can use the dimensions and stuff listed there to source your own parts. But I'm going to put it all together into a little zip file that you can find available on my website. Hopefully that answers a lot of the questions that some of you have had and also will provide you with some helpful files. So maybe you can look at building your own. One thing to keep in mind though, is that if you do plan to build a jig like this, you do need to make some sort of a sled to be able to hold the guitar body nice and level as you pass it under the jig. I'm gonna include in that package as well, the STL files that I used to make the little cradles for my jig. If you want to use that, you absolutely can, or you need to come up with something else of your own design, but just remember you got to have a little sled. Another thing that I'm considering is making a small batch of these and offering them for sale on my website. So if you might be at all interested in purchasing one of these jigs pre-built, 100%, router not included, let me know and that's going to help influence my decision as to whether or not I want to try to build a batch of these things. I think it might be kind of fun, but I want to hear from you guys if that would be something you might be interested in. So make sure to check out the link in the video description that's going to take you to my website where you can check out the plan pack for this jig. And also if you're interested in possibly purchasing a pre-made jig, let me know down in the comment. That way I can kind of gauge interest. I know it's not an exact science, but kind of will help influence my decision moving forward. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time.